Yo, what's up? This is Corey Porter, Shinron Slayer, back with another deck profile for y'all. So today we're going to be looking at the Invoker deck. Um, it's one of those decks that, you know, every time we stream, whether it's over on the Shinrons or over on the DBS decks Twitch page, um, we all, like probably a couple times a night, we'll get asked, hey, do you think Invoker's still good? Do you think Invoker's still meta? How good do you think Invoker's going to be? Yada, 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 yada. And, you know, I always answer the same thing that I think it's very good. Um, so we finally kind of wanted to get into testing it. Um, we kind of were messing around with a couple different lists. Um, the list that you're going to see today is the final culmination of kind of what we came up with on stream yesterday. You know, we started with around 57 cards and we started like getting down to, I think we're at 53 at the moment. Um, it's one of those decks that there's a lot of cards that you want to put in it. There's a lot of really strong cards. Um, it does gain quite a bit from the new set 10 stuff, in particular the Sun Goku Rival Seeker, which adds like a whole nother dimension of the deck. Now you get like a another win condition, whereas before you're just trying to get into like the Apex and kind of win that way. Now you have the Catastrophic Blow option, which the more you get those in your hand and you get to that five energy, Benchmark, you can just kind of win the game regardless of whatever your opponent's life is, as long as you're able to just kind of get those going, um, which is a really strong ability. Uh, it just brings, like I said, just a whole other dimension. Um, it does struggle with aggro. You got to kind of be able to like survive the tide of aggro early. But if you are able to do that, I think there's so many advantages for what the deck can do long term um, that it's something that's really worth trying. But as always, we stream over on twitch.tv slash Shenron's Lair every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So come feel free to check that out. As always, we test all the decks that we profile here on the channel over on the stream. And then we also have a Discord. So if you're just looking for great conversation, you want deck advice, you need ruling help, whatever it is, feel free to check that out. The link will be down in the description below. But other than that, let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so first up, taking a look at our leader, we're in, on our front side, we're in Activate Battle. Whenever this card is in a battle, choose one extra card in your hand, place it in your drop area, then choose the one card in your life and add it to your hand, then draw one card. Then this card gets plus 5,000 power and the skill is negated for the duration of the battle. And then he's an Awaken Surge, choose one red, one blue card in your hand, place them underneath this card, and we draw three cards, and then choose up to one of your energy and switch to active mode. And then on his backside, if your life is at five or less, and you choose one card underneath this card and place it in its owner's drop area, choose one. If you have a Universe 7 card in play, draw one card, and then your opponent reveals their hand. Choose up to one extra card or a battle card with 35k power or less from it and place it in their drop area. Or you can choose up to three multicolored extra cards with different names in your drop area and or warp and then add them to your hand. So pretty much everyone is somewhat well aware of what, you know, Invoker Coup is what this is particularly called, but he just has a lot of just like really solid effects. His front side ability to just really get out of a lot of pressure and draw cards at the same time is really nice to get that 5k every battle. So every time, whether it's offensively or defensively, you know, just by pitching a card, you're replacing a card in hand. And now you have a Sensu Bean type effect where you're getting that five for that battle, which is really solid because then you can add combo power on top of that. Um, that, you know, helps with his survivability versus the early um, aggression. Uh, you also just get to like cycle through your deck. You're, you know, you're pitching cards that you need in the drop. You're drawing cards. You can take life if you need to. Um, generally, you're wanting to stay at a higher life total with this kind of leader. Uh, so whenever you get to the backside, you can have a lot. You can use all of his effects and different things like that. But um, you do have that option to do that. And then the draw three on tap one is just really solid. And then moving on over to his backside, um, this is where he gets some really, really powerful effects. Just the fact that you can just remove a card from it, draw a card, and then look at your opponent's hand. Even if you're not able to take anything out of it, just getting that knowledge of what's in there. You know, you can remove a negate, you can remove a super combo, you can remove a big bomb that you don't want to deal with, whatever it is. There's a lot of really just outs that you get there. And then finally, just the being able to just plus three to your hand is just incredibly powerful, um, especially because the extra cards on the stacks are just really, really over the top powerful. All right, getting into the list. Um, so first up, we're running a 4-3 split of the Tournament of Power Arena and then the Whis Tournament Spectator. Um, so really, the deck doesn't function without this Tournament of Power Arena. So just for my personal opinion, I'm trying to prioritize making sure that I get that. Um, the Whis lets us do that. So that's why we're running such a heavy line. I know a lot of people recommend running maybe like a 4-2 or maybe lowering the tournament um, and then running more Whis or whatever it is. I just feel like I want to have as much access to the Tournament of Power as possible. Um, but it, so for the Tournament of Power Arena, it's a one drop blue field card. And then permanent, if your leader card is a Universe 7 card, negate the energy exhaust of your red, blue, multicolor cards in all areas. And then from an activate main, if your leader card is a universe 7 card and you switch this card to rest mode, look it up to three cards from the top of your deck, then place them at the top or bottom of your deck in any order. 
Now, so how the official ruling on this is, so whenever you look at the top three, you can rearrange them and put all three at the top, or you put rearrange them and put all three at the bottom. You can't put like one at the top, two at the bottom. That was some of the questions whenever the fart card first came out, but that's since been clarified. Uh, well, this still makes it incredibly powerful because you're essentially stacking your deck how you want it. Uh, you know, maybe you, you revealed three cards and nine, none of them are really ones you need or whatever it is. You can just put those at the bottom. And that way you can keep digging through the deck and eventually you'll get back to those cards. But just being able to continually cycle, see what your draws are going to be, setting up your draws, whatever it is, it's just a really powerful ability. And then more importantly, the ability to just put a multicolored card on energy, just ignoring um, energy exhaust. And that's with all of your multicolored cards on the deck. So you don't have to run one of the actual check lands because now all of your multicolored cards now effectively become that. And then uh, three of the Weiss uh, tournament spectators. So he's just a one drop, one blue auto. Whenever you play this card, choose with one tournament to power arena from your deck, add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Kind of like we talked about, um, we just really are pri prioritizing, making sure that we see the tournament um, field card as often as possible and as soon as possible. That way the deck can really get going. You need to start getting multicolored cards in your energy, ideally as early as turn two, turn three. Uh, and this just allows us to do that and we don't get that negative of having to put those cards in rest mode moving on into the actual deck um we're gonna go over the battle cards first and then we'll go back over the extra cards because unlike a typical deck this is really heavy extra card uh but first up we've got four of the ssb vegeta inspired technique so he's a three drop for a red and two blue he's got barrier deflect energy exhaust and invoker and so invoker is the key word that really kind of makes the deck go then Invoker says, whenever you're playing an energy card with a red or blue, whenever you're paying the energy cost for a red or blue multicolor extra card, you can switch one red or blue multicolor energy card in rest mode instead. So what this allows us to do is, let's say, just for an example, like this Royal Condemnation, which traditionally costs four. Um, as long as we have a card with Invoker out on the field, we only need to tap one of our multicolored cards and we can just play that card. So it's effectively turning all of our extra cards into one cost, which is super powerful because a lot of these really powerful extra cards are rather expensive normally, uh, but Invoker lets us get around that. Um, and so this guy is really kind of kind of going with the tournament power, kind of really what the deck revolves around. You need to get Invoker out. This is our easiest way to get Invoker out because he also has Barrier Deflect, so he's really hard to interact with. Once he comes out, he's pretty much there. He's also a 19k, so he can apply a decent amount of pressure, but generally you're wanting to keep this guy protected so you have access to those cheap extra cards. Next up, we've got four Sun Goku Rival Seekers, so it's a three drop for a red and a blue. He's a 19k. Uh, permanent, if you have a red or blue multicolored extra card in your drop area, reduce the combo cost of this card in your hand by one. And then activate in once per turn. If you have five or more energy and you add two red-blue multicolor extra cards from your warp to your hand, Choose with one red, blue, multicolor Sun Goku card with energy cost of six in your hand and play it on top of this card. So this is the new addition from set 10. Um, his reduced combo cost isn't something we're ever really going to use. Really what we're using this for is for three energy, get this guy out, and then we get two cards back from our warp. And then we go into the Ultra Instinct Sun Goku Energy Explosion, which we'll cover now. So he's a six drop for two red, three blue. He's a 35k energy exhaust invoker auto. Choose three of your energy, place them in your drop area. Whenever you play this card from your hand, choose up to three of your cards in your drop area, negate their energy exhaust, and place them in your energy. And then auto once per turn. When one of your card deals damage to your opponent, deal one damage. When one of your card deals damage, deal an additional one damage to your opponent. So this is really what we're wanting to do. So we're running, wanting to get to that five energy, play three, play the rival seeker. You know, use his ability, get two from the warp, then put out the ultra instinct uh, energy explosion. Now we get to reset our energy, so effectively the whole chain was free. And then now, uh, we also we have another invoker target, but then we're able to go into the catastrophic blow, which we'll cover in a little bit, which is really kind of the primary win condition of the deck now, because now you're not ever having to actually pressure your opponent, really. But moving into the rest of the battle cards, we're running four Topo, Righteous Aid, pretty much everyone knows this is by now, but it's just a great negate. Um, it's really solid versus aggro. Uh, you do have to be careful, especially in the blue matchup. If they're running the blue trunks counterplay card, um, this nullifies his secondary auto on the topo. So this is something to be aware of when you're playing blue. But versus most aggro type decks, you don't really have to worry. So you're able to drop this off versus like a VJAX or something like that. Um, and kind of really extend the game, which is generally speaking all you really need to do with this deck. You just need to get into your later turns. 
And then finally for our normal battle cards, we're running one of the Sun Goku and Vegeta Apex of Power. So this is our SCR, he's an 8 drop for 2 red, 3 blue, 45k ultimate, victory strike. Um, invoker and then activate main for two red three blue if your leader card is a universe seven card and you have five or more red blue multicolor extra cards in your drop area negate the skills of your opponent's non-extra cards in all areas until the end of your opponent's next turn then play this card from your hand so just being able to play a big victory striker for five energy is really solid um, and then he just negs all of your opponent's card skills the exception of extra cards um, for a whole turn cycle which is very strong so this is you know traditionally this was more of your like main win condition in previous versions of invoker now it almost sits as more of an alternate win condition because we're able to get the catastrophic blow combo off uh, but still just being able to get into victory strike is just a really solid win condition i know i've seen some other variations that are running the old awaken power victory strike um, you know, there's pros and cons to both of them. I just feel personally that this fits, it just jives more with what the deck is at, at the moment. Um, so that's why we're going with the Apex of Power. Um, going into our super combos, we're running a 2-2 split of the backbone of Universe 7 Sun Goku. So this is just if your life is at fire last, 5 or less, uh, you can draw a card and then plus 10k power. And then the two of the Beerus Divine Obliterator, which in my personal opinion is probably the best super combo in the game. Um, especially at the moment and then it's just an auto if your leader card is red or blue and it's your opponent's turn whatever you combo with this card from your hand choose the one of your red blue multicolor energy and switch them to active mode now because of we're invoker and so we only need one red or blue energy untapped uh, this is incredibly powerful for us it, you know we're able to you know use this to get out of a get out of damage and then now we're open to all of our multitude of extra cards which have all sorts of different effects just incredibly powerful. We do still want to get access to the normal draw super combo. That's where we're running a split. Um, I do think that's right. I've tried it with just the four Beerus. Um, and then personally, I've just missed that draw from the normal super combo. So that's why I kind of want to run it with that split. Now, moving on into the extra cards, which there are plenty. Uh, first up, we've got three Dimension Magic. This is just our standard blue negate because we are a blue leader. Uh, so it's a sparky negate. We can untap two energy. It's really solid. And let's say you get in a situation where you tap out all of your multicolor energy, you can pay one, play this, and then instead of just tapping like two mono blue, you could untap two uh, extra or multicolor blue instead, uh, which gives you access to all of your invoker type cards, um, which is really solid there. Next up, we're running four Sensu Bean. So this is um, kind of back and forth on Sensu Bean, the value in Sensu Bean in this deck. Um, in a non like super aggressive format, I think you could potentially cut the Sensu Beans down. Um, to two or maybe even potentially none which kind of feels weird running a blue deck but just the way the format is right now you don't necessarily need all that access to since you mean um, and it's in this deck in particular but because of all the aggro that is floating around i feel like having that extra defense is really strong for us especially early in the game that's we're running that four up to get that extra value i feel like if you're going up against a vjx matchup you need to see a since you bean and a topo by turn two and it would really try to give you that opportunity to make it to the later turns of the game. So that's why right now we're running four. Next up, we've got three Tyranny's Cost. So it's a two cost, one red, one blue, and then it's activate main, draw two cards. And then if your opponent has 11 or more cards in their hand, they choose cards in their hand and shuffle them into the deck until they have 10 cards in their hand. Now, generally, this is just a pay one, draw two. Um, obviously, because of Invoker, uh, we only have to pay one for this. If you ever get in a situation where you're having to pay two for this, it still doesn't feel too bad because you're still drawing two cards, so it's a plus one. And then a secondary effect to make your opponent shuffle cards in their hand until they get down to 10 isn't something to like like ignore it in for certain matchups it become like super important not so much now that piccolo surge is kind of gone the way but there are some decks that just like to accumulate cards in hand and this is kind of a good way to get some form of a hand destruction as well and um, next up we're running three sleepy boy technique which in person personally is one of my favorite cards in the deck um, so it's a three cost, one red, one blue counterattack, negate the attack, then draw two cards, then choose up one of your opponent's battle cards and return it to its owner's hand. So with our invoker, this is just uh, a one cost negate that draws you two cards. So it's a plus one, as well as bouncing something back to your opponent's hand. So it can effectively work like two negates in a turn, which is really solid. It can get like a, maybe a blocker out of the way, whatever it is going into your turn. There's a lot of great versatility out of this, but the main thing that makes this so strong is just that it's cycling through the deck because it's drawing cards every time you play it. And for one energy, that's just an incredible value card. Next up, we're running three Emperor's Death Beam. So the three cost, two red, one blue. It's an activate main or battle. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier. It gets minus 30k power for the duration of the turn. 
and then activate main send this card from your drop area to your warp look at the top card of your deck if it's a multicolor extra card you may add it to your hand otherwise place it on top of your deck so this is just a great way uh, to get rid of a big threat because it ignores barrier and you're only paying one you're just really just targeting anything you want on the field and getting rid of it for the most part a 30k neg on anything with barrier is very hard to deal with um, it can get rid of most things since it happens in the activate uh, battle phase you know you never get to that combo step so defensively it's a really solid option um, and then secondary effect is really nice um, so let's say you pitch it earlier for off of your leader ability to get the draw and the plus five then with your stacking your deck how you want with the tournament of power you can just send this to your warp and then effectively draw a card as long as you know what it is even if you don't you still get to see access to it and that's important because we do need to get cards into our warp in order to gain the maximum advantage off of the Sun Goku Rival Seeker. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. But um, Emperor's Death Beam is just an incredibly defensive card. Uh, just being, like I said, ignoring barriers hard to come by in the game in general. And then being able to do it for one and a negative 30k is just very... Generally, you're going to be able to pop anything you want to get rid of. All right, next up, we've got three. Uh, we're in this together. So it's a four cost, two red and a blue. Energy Exhaust and Activate Main. If your leader card is a Universe 7 card, choose all of your opponent's battle cards at 25k power or less and KO them. And then Activate Main for one red. If your leader card is a Universe 7 card, add this card from your drop area to your hand. So this is a great value card. This is just a big board wipe for us. And as long as we're playing Invoker and Invoker's out, we only pay one energy to blow up the board 25k or less. So any deck that goes really wide, you know, you can go like drop a topo on a turn and stop a really aggressive wide turn. And then on the next turn, play the we're in this together, blow up the board. And then the really like great value thing of we're in this together is just for one red, you can return it to your hand. There's a lot of really good synergy with the front side of your leader as well, uh, because you're just pitching extra cards um, in order to draw and get the 5k. Pitching the wearing this together is a really strong ability for you because then you can just bounce back to your hand and you can kind of loop that for a while, um, which is good value as well. Next up, we've got three Royal Condemnation. So it's a four drop for two blue, two red, energy exhaust, counterplay. If your leader card is a universe seven card and if the battle card being played has an energy cost of eight or less, it's placed at the bottom of its owner deck instead of being played. And then activate main, send this card from your drop area to your warp. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's a multicolored extra card, you may add it to your hand. Otherwise, place it on top of your deck. So this is just like a just a big counterplay card, you know, because it's eight or less. You're able to really get rid of anything you don't want to deal with, with the exception of things that have deflect. But generally speaking, a lot of things more recently aren't coming in with the deflect at the moment. So being able to just say for one energy, that big bomb you're trying to play, it goes away. It's just really solid. Um, it's one of the stronger extra cards in the game, let alone just in the deck in general, especially the fact that you can play it for one. If you were to play it for four, it's not nearly as strong. But for one energy, it's just great value. And also the cycling effect of being able to in the drop, just draw a card effectively off of it is really nice as well. And then finally, um, kind of what the whole central piece of the deck is now, in my opinion, is the catastrophic blow. So we're running a four, four of these. So it's a five cost, three red, two blue, activate main. If you have a red, blue, multicolor Sun Goku card in play, or there are no battle cards in your battle area, deal one damage to your opponent. And then activate main, send this card from your drop area to warp, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a multicolored extra card, you may add this to your hand, otherwise place it on top of your deck. So kind of what we were talking about going into the energy explosion, Ultra Instinct Sun Goku, we get to that five energy. We get the Ultra Instinct um, Energy Explosion out. Now we have five energy open, ideally all red blue now after the reset. Now with his ability and then you play a catastrophic blow. Now that one that one catastrophic blow, the first one you play deals two damage. And then every catastrophic blow after that deals a damage. But you know, if you were to have four in your hand for five for four energy, you're dealing five damage right there to your opponent. Um, so if they're at five, there's nothing that they can do to stop that. And then you can use your leader ability to get another one of these out of the drop put it, or, and put it back in your hand, and you can do it again. So for four cards, you can do six damage and just kill your opponent, not having to ever pressure them after that or, until they get to like six, which is incredibly powerful. It does require quite a bit of cards, but you're able to cycle so much that you should be able to get into those most of the time. Um, then other things that you can do is that because the energy explosion does not have unique or any type of restriction on it, you can have multiple of these out. So let's say you go on a big turn where you go rival seeker to energy explosion to rival seeker to energy explosion. Now your first catastrophic blow deals three damage. And then obviously you do the math from there. Um, so you're really able to 
you know, comfortably get your opponent at five, and then you can just sit, and then you can just win the game once you get to turn five, and then you drop all your catastrophic blows. Which is, like I said, it's just incredibly powerful. Uh, before, the win condition was more going into, like, the Apex and going into Victory Strike, or maybe the other six-drop Goku that gets triple strike and can untap. But now, just being able to say, cool, you're at five, I'm not going to attack you anymore for the game, and I'm just going to drop extra guards that you can't stop, and I'm just going to win. It's an incredibly powerful ability. Something the game's not really seen before. Um, it's you know, it's straight burn, and it's really powerful burn. Uh, there's not really any side effects to it. It's not like one that deals damage to you as well. It just burns them for one um, or two with the energy explosion out. But anyway, guys, that is it for the list. We're going to go ahead and get into some game playing now. So we'll see you next time. All right, so here we're getting into our testing. So this was off our stream yesterday. Uh, so be sure to check those out, but um, for whatever reason, the audio didn't come through on the recording, so now I'm going back over and just kind of commentating over this. Uh, but we're testing up here against a Beerus stack. Uh, getting into our opening hand. So we don't see immediate access to the field. We also don't see the Vegeta that we're looking for. We do have the Whis, so we're going to keep that. Um, we want to make sure we have blue to charge for that. Most of this, we're going to be able to send back into the deck. Uh, versus this Beerus, we're just really kind of concerned if they're going to be able to aggro us out or not. Uh, so we get our mulligan. Uh, we do find the field card. Um, we've got a pretty solid hand. So we're looking to pretty much get into the field card turn one. And then turn two, we're good to start charging our multicolor extra cards. Or just our multicolored in general. And kind of going from there. Um, so this is going to be a red-yellow Beerus. Like I said, at the time, we were really worried about the aggro potential. Uh, particularly like the Bardock the Resolute was something that I was kind of concerned with uh, because starting to get that double strike pressure early um, is something we don't really want to have to deal with. Once I started seeing like the baby cards and things like that I wasn't 100% sure what we were getting into uh, but we've got the field card so we're going to go ahead and charge this Whis because now we don't need it anymore. Uh, we're just going to go straight into our tournament of power and then we're going to start looking at the top um, and see what we can find so uh we don't see the vegeta so uh right now all i'm really concerned with is putting everything at the bottom of the deck uh, vegeta is kind of what i'm getting into um i probably go a little too hard zeroing in on the vegeta but um it's kind of what we're looking for for the most part I'm kind of debating here whether i actually want to pressure because we do want to be able to get him down to like five at a minimum in order to really take advantage of our catastrophic blows and so now I'm just kind of weighing our options, like, what do we need to look out for? Um, at this point in the game, I'm really thinking about, like, the Bard of the Resolute's probably something that's going to come out, um, just traditionally for a red deck. Going to go ahead and get his cycle. Uh, you know, Beerus is really good that way. Just pitch and draw, too. So here's where we get our first swing. We're not going to negate, obviously, because we're tapped out, but here we can just pitch an extra card and then draw and then get the 5k and just going to get out of this. So he is going to combo. He's going to go up to 15 here. I have to kind of familiarize myself with a lot of these red-yellow cards. I'm not 100% certain on what a lot of them do. Um, so I kind of debate what I'm going to pitch. Um, I'm kind of worried about Beerus and, like, uh, Heartfelt Plea. So for the moment, I'm going to keep the Death Beam and get rid of the Condemnation. Um, because he's at uh, 15k, I'm just going to go ahead and take the two cards. I want to see more cards here. Our hand's kind of awkward. We do draw into the Apex, which right now at the point of the game, it's not something we're super worried about. We're just going to kind of hang on to that, but we're sitting on three Death Beams right now, which is a little more than what we'd want. So we're going to our turn two. We do find the Vegeta, um, so we're pretty set up from here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and charge one of the Death Beams, because I probably only need to see two of these throughout the course of the game. I'm going to go ahead and spin the top and see what we got. And we get a Condemnation. Uh, Catastrophic Blow and a Bean. I'm just going to go ahead and spin all these to the bottom. Because uh, Catastrophic Blow is something I don't necessarily need to see for a little bit later in the game. And, you know, here's kind of the debate again. Do I go ahead and start pressuring him now and giving him cards, or do I kind of hang out? I do ultimately decide to pressure. Uh, we're not really worried about comboing. That is something about the deck, that there's just not a lot of inherent combo power, offensively or defensively. But I do get to use my leader ability here. To go to 15k, I get to draw a card. So I am getting some draw and some cycle. 
we'll go ahead and do that. Here's kind of my choice. Like, do I go ahead and Tyranny's Cost here? Tap out. I get the draw too, but I'm trying to debate whether that's worth. Because um, again, at, you have to remember at this point, I'm really concerned with the Bardock the Resolute. Uh, most red decks are playing that right now, and that's a really aggressive card. Opponent goes ahead and takes it, and we just go ahead and pass. We just feel like keeping the energy open is probably a little bit better for us. We don't want to get down like super in life, like super early being tapped out here. So we do see the Nimbus. Um, he's going real hard, red, yellow. I'm not worried about blue at the, now. We pretty much would have seen it. Sometimes a lot of these Beerus decks pretty much are like carbon copies of the Surge Q lists. And they can go tricolor pretty easily. So he's going in at two. He's kind of changing his mind here. If I remember correctly, he does go into the crit Beerus here. Yeah, so here's a 15k crit, um, which is something we don't really want to have to deal with. He's going to go ahead and get his cycle and draw from the leader. Which again is what makes that Beerus so powerful, just being able to draw so many cards. Uh, now we do see that he is running the Shin. Which doesn't really affect us too, too much. Um, because our only battle card that we're really going to play that he can interact with um, as Barrier. He's also playing this Frieza, which is Frieza gets a little bit annoying. Because he's able to neg um, things 10k. He's swinging into the leader here. Kind of looking at my options. I'm not going to negate, though I do have the Dimension Magic in hand. Uh, he's just going 15 here. Trying to recheck my leader, make sure that it's extra cards that I have to pitch. So I do ahead and go ahead and pitch the Death Beam. Which, in hindsight, that's already three Death Beams accounted for, which is all of our Death Beams at this point. So that may have been a little bit of an aggressive play there on my end. But we go ahead and go to 15, take the draw. We get the Rival Seeker, so we're kind of set up. Uh, we just gotta get to the 5. So now he's swinging with the crits. Uh, we don't negate, though, in hindsight. I probably should have. Instead, we go ahead and bean ourselves, and then we pitch the Dimension Magic, so we get the draw. See another Tyranny's cost. So with the bean and our leader ability, we're going up to 20k there. We can get out of that. That's it for his turn. Uh, going into my turn, I'm, I know at this point I'm looking to get into the Vegeta like as soon as possible here. Just kind of considering what my energy options are. Are. I don't really want to charge the field card because I can just go into that next turn. I mean, not next turn, but off of our leader. We can swing. I'm kind of debating. Uh, we go ahead and just go with the Tyranny's Cost because we need to get a couple multicolored cards and energy to really get going. So we go ahead and spend the top. Look at our top. Uh, we see pretty good options here. Um, Sleepy Boy is a really good card. It's a great negate for us, and it's more cycle. So if we put the Sleepy Boy at the top, by playing that, we just go ahead and draw those next two cards. Uh, the Whis is irrelevant, but the Topo is potentially important. So here we just kind of go into the Vegeta. Now we've got our Invoker set up. I'm kind of debating it still. If I want to go tapped out here, but I think it's okay. Get a no response here. So Vegeta's good. So now Invoker's live. Our hand is kind of small, though. I'm kind of debating what's the best route to go here. I do need to start seeing more cards. Uh, we do know our next three cards are going to be. I'm kind of debating like if I want to swing, pitch, and go ahead and awaken. We still don't want to really pressure the leader, give him more cards, because he's already drawing an absolute ton at this point, but so we swing at the Beerus. Uh, we go ahead and pitch the uh, tournament of power. We don't need those anymore. We go ahead and take the life so we can see more draw. And now at this point, I've pretty much committed. I'm going to go ahead and flip. So we go ahead and put the rival seeker and the Tyranny's Cost. That way we can get our Awakened Surge. So now we're going up to 25 on this swing. Untap, draw three, which we already know what two of those are. Can't remember, I think we are able to go ahead and kill this, yeah. And then we accidentally get rid of the Tyranny's Cost that needs to be up there by the leader. It's our Awaken. But now, yeah, I get that, get that fixed. So we're kind of weighing our options. We have an Energy Open, we have a Beerus, so we can untap. Uh, we got Sensu Bean so we can untap. We got the Sleepy Boy, so we got a negate ready. We're pretty well off. Uh, we're checking our drop. We don't have three different names, so we're pretty much done for the turn. I'm just kind of in my head trying to figure out what our potential threats are going to be here. Because we only are sitting on one negate. We are at five, so we're not too bad off there. Uh, we do see the Whis check land, but we are sitting relatively comfortable the Sleepy Boy. Um, because... 
you know, a lot of the time it can work for two negates for us, the bounce. Now we're just trying to get to five and kind of get into our catastrophic blow. Um, he's gonna go ahead and swing at leader, so he's going 10 to 15. So we know there's gonna be a combo happening. Um, here I kind of debate my decision. Um, I'm worried about a rival now. And then with this freeze up potentially negging things. So I think I do go ahead and uh, sleepy boy. And I bounce the Frieza. So he would have to hard cast the Frieza again and then swing. So that's a lot of like neg for him. So we do go ahead and get the sleepy boy. Get the draw, which the draw is nice. Tyranny's cost is good for us going into our next turn. Vegeta uh, is a pretty solid energy because we don't need that anymore. Yeah, and he's just going to go ahead and play it again get his draw. Which I think when I sleepy boyed, I'd forgotten about him getting the draw off of that, but... Ends up being fine. Now we're just kind of waiting for him to figure out what his plans are. He's going to go ahead and warp the Whis to take a life. Which this is one that I completely forgot what it did. And he's going to swing here. So that's when we know that he is trying to arrival. So we see the Whis super combo. We're going into the Beerus here. Which he doesn't have a lot that he can do. Keep our leader from attacking. Which we don't draw off our leader swing anymore, so it's not that big of a deal for us. But here in my head, I'm like, okay, I gotta find a way to get rid of this Beerus. Um, just because that's when he can start um, getting into Heartfelt Play. So that's their 25k target. Um, he is going to swing with the Beerus. He only goes to 14 with the Frieza, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we don't... I mean, we could negate this. We don't have it again, actually, but we could super combo. Get out of this, though I think we just decide to go ahead and take it. It's just, you know, 25k single strike, so we have to pitch two cards in order to get out of it. Just checking all of our drop, everything that we got going on. But ultimately, we do. We just go ahead and take this. Let's go to five, which is fine. So we're going into our turn. We get our draw. We get the energy explosion. Now we're just missing the rival seeker. Um, in hindsight, I do charge energy explosion here. Charging the Vegeta may have been better. We go ahead and spin the top. You see the uh, we're in this together, which is a great out for us. Like we're talking about now, we're worried about him getting into heartfelt plea. So we can just pay for one. Go into Tyranny's Cost, draw two. And for one more, we can just drop the we're in this together and just blow up this board. I'm um, just really efficiently just for one energy. Heartfelt Plea is not like a super issue for us uh, because at this point in the game, we can get back the Death Beam, but it is something we just don't really want to have to deal with if we don't have to. Just giving him free cards. So just by getting rid of this Beerus, he's going to have to go into multiple additional cards in order to do that. I'm going to go ahead and use my leader ability here. I'm going to get back a Tyranny's Cost, a Sleepy Boy, I think a Death Beam, or a Condemnation, I get Condemnation. So now we're pretty well set to defend anything uh, between the Sleepy Boy and the Condemnation. I'm considering a swing here to Sensu Bean, which we do go ahead and do that. Though ultimately I, I don't Sensu Bean, I just want to get him to, that's where we figured, we want to start getting him lower so our Catastrophic Blows can go right now not with access to the rival seeker in hand uh, i kind of figured out we could just get to six and just play the energy explosion from hand and go that way if we can get him low enough we don't need like multiple catastrophic blows so it's kind of what we're looking for right now we seem to survive two turns goes two um and he goes death battle here he does he is able to get rid of our vegeta which is annoying is now our invokers no longer active so our condemnation and everything like that um that whole plan doesn't quite work for us but we are sitting on a topo we do have our beerus and our sensu bean so we're all right it's gonna go ahead and use his draw start cycling a little bit i think this is the turn he ends up awakening as well yeah he's gonna pitch draw two so his hand's pretty fat but i'm really not that worried we've got solid defensive options on our hand um the following turn we can go back into that vegeta 
I'm not super worried about that. Um, he's going to go ahead and flip. He does go ahead and hard cast the baby. So here's where we get some decisions. Um, so at five, we're at four. Uh, he is tapped out. We are sitting on Topo. So, you know, our debate is we take the three or we crit the three and the baby goes to the drop and then we're pretty vulnerable. Or because we only know that he has two swings here, we can just go ahead and... So I kind of debate it for a while, but ultimately we decide that we're not going to take the three. We're going to let the baby hit so our leader gets the neg. And then we let him take the tr draw two off the offering. Uh, because we are sitting on this topo, he can only, you know, get us one swing. He can get two swings at us, uh, but, you know, we'll topo one, so he only can pressure us once. We're not going to be able to combo out of anything anyway. Um, and I feel like even if he were to swing at us twice, being at three versus being at one, just way better for us. So that's kind of our debate. Um, you know, I've got some buddies in Discord as we're going through all this. Like, what's our options? I feel pretty comfortable with the topo. Um, you know, with him being tap out, I'm not super worried about something coming out. You know, we're debating what arrival cards or not arrival. Um, Overrealm could he potentially be playing to try to get multiple swings at us? But you know, we kind of come back to we got this topo, so we're pretty comfortable. And this baby only has single strike, so we're not overly worried about it. And now, because we're really into like survival mode, uh, we're just kind of. How do we not lose the game at this point? Because we just need to get to six. Yeah, so we just go ahead and we let the baby come out. You know, our leader gets the negative 30k. Um, and he gets to draw two cards off the offering. In hindsight, I still believe this was probably the best decision. Just where we were at the moment. We weren't, like, overly threatened. And then I felt pretty comfortable that these topos could help us make it out of whatever situation we were in. So he's going to go ahead and swing uh, with his leader. Reach his side, go, go topo. I think we pitch the Whis here. One of the Whis. Now all the attacks are dealt with. And he wants to, you know, start pitching cards, which he has the card advantage to do that. But if he's not going into kill right now, it's not really worth it for him. Just give me additional cards. Um, so I think he's kind of going over that right now, but he decides not to swing for the rest of the turn and he just goes ahead and passes. Yeah, he just goes ahead and passes. So we do draw another Vegeta, so we're pretty well set up. I kind of figure out my energy here. Um, I go with the Whis. Going with the one of the Vegetas might have been a better option. Just to get more of that multicolor available to us. But, you know, we're looking at everything. I decide that we just need to get to next turn. With him, we get four life. Uh, we just need to maybe pressure one damage and we're good to go. Off of the two catastrophic blows. Just kind of weighing it out. He's tapped out right now. Uh, we only need to, like I said, Pressure him to three, then uh, we only really need one catastrophic blow plus our leader ability to win the game. If we can get the energy explosion out. We're just kind of going through, making sure there's nothing that's just really going to kind of bite us in the butt. We do ultimately end up just playing another Vegeta here. You know, and then we also have the decision is um, Apex, which I don't believe we had the five and drop for that to work, but with his hand so big. Um, it would be pretty easy for him to combo out. So we just decide that Vegeta is probably the better play. We're going to go ahead and spin the top. There's nothing there for us that we're just like crazy about because we do need to see catastrophic blows at this point. So we're just going to bottom deck everything. And then our deck's relatively low now, so we should be able to start getting into what we need. We've not seen any of our catastrophic blows, really, so. And right now, we're looking at, you know, we've got five energy at six. We can just drop this Goku and then go um, that way, and then we get the three new energy. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and start pressuring. Um, 
we go ahead and sense you bean here, I believe. Yeah, we sense you bean. So I've got three multicolor energy available to us defensively, uh, which is good because we get like Sleepy Boy and a Topo. So we're putting in pressure at 25. Um, he goes ahead and takes it, which in hindsight maybe wouldn't have been worth for him, but he goes ahead and does it. Uh, so now we're pretty much set. We just know we just need a catastrophic blow. We can go ahead and win the game. Right now we're just kind of debating what our outs are or what his outs are. Uh, we go ahead and Tyranny's cost. We see our two catastrophic blows. So now we're not super worried. We pretty much have game next turn. Kind of debating like what could his potential outs be um, if he could get a situation where he can deal with this Vegeta and we lose our... Uh, you know, or Sleepy Boy and everything like that, that would be bad for us. I still have my leader ability available to look at his hand. And that's kind of what the debate is. Um, if nothing else, we just get that knowledge, see what he's got planned for us. Because we have game locked up if we can make it to next turn. We're just checking what's the better option to do his hand or you know fill back up our hand I'm really debating because if this Vegeta dies then we're in a bad situation you know we've got the beers to untap we've got all that going on for us we already know that he does play the death battle so that's kind of the debate like if he has another death battle then this Vegeta goes we do ultimately side to rip his hand. And now we can kind of see what our outs are here. I do make sure to get my draw. Sometimes I'm bad about forgetting to get that draw off that leader effect. So taking a look at his hand, um, we don't see a death battle. That Kaioken is like the one I zero in on pretty instantly knowing that Kaioken can just get rid of my Vegeta. Uh, but nothing else I'm overly worried about. We do notice he's got the Broly where he can rip our hand. Um, so we need to try to avoid that situation. Um, but there's nothing here that overly scares me. You know, he's got a Beerus, which can be big, but I'm not overly worried. The Kaioken, like I said, is the only thing just because that kills my Goku, or it kills my Vegeta. And we need to have access to our Invoker next turn, or his turn. That's just kind of our debate. You know, the Broly is an option, but ultimately, um, the Kaioken is just like, you know, like we talked about, that kills the Vegeta, and the Vegeta is kind of important for us. So we just go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, we have a way to get out of the Broly range because we have the We're in this together in the drop. So we can just pay the one and uh, return that to hand. So we're only sitting at the one energy, which does leave us somewhat um, vulnerable, but we're going back and forth right here because I couldn't remember the wording on Broly. Whether it was uh, I needed to have uh, two or more, at least two, or is it specifically two? Because my debate was, do I swing? I can go Sensu Bean and then have three energy open, but um, we got the I got the clarification that it needed to be two or more. So that's what I noticed. We got the we're in this together. I just go ahead and bounce that back to my hand. Now we're good. I only have one energy, so Broly can't do anything, at least initially. So we're pretty comfortable here, so we can just go ahead and pass. Um, even with what we saw in his hand, there wasn't anything like that was going to pressure us, really. Because we have a pretty solid combination in our hand with the Beerus and the uh, Condemnation. We've also got the Topo as well, so... So we're pretty happy with where we're at. We're just confident if we can make it into our next turn, then we're good to go. He does charge the Broly, which kind of gives me, you know, there's a debate whether he would have another one if you charge it if you have it. You know, we kind of went with he probably didn't draw another one, he just charged it because he felt it was dead. So now we are 
relatively comfortable with the Sensu Beans and the Barris getting that two energy. We're still sitting at four, so we're pretty comfortable. The other thing with the Beerus leader at this point is he does get his once per turn combo with a multicolored card from the drop, so he's, you know, always at 25 effectively once per turn. So he is going to swing. Uh, we do consider here that he's probably going to go into uh, the Beerus. So he's going to get his, yeah, he's going to get his super combo from the drop. But she can make our Topo here, which isn't super relevant anymore. But yeah, so we see the two. We know Beerus is coming. We just go ahead and Royal Condemnation that. Find it. A lot of these cards are pretty similar with Vegeta's. So yeah, we go ahead and Royal Condemnation that. Make that go away. Now we, since we already knew pretty much what was in his hand, we know there's not another threat. So now he's just coming at us at 25. Uh, we just uh, drop the beers here. We untap. And we go to Sensu Bean. So now we have two energy open. We're at a 20 base. We're sitting on a Sleepy Boy and a Topo. At the four energy here, we're not really worried about anything that he can do. I think he's just kind of debating his options here. He goes one, two. He goes and hard cast the Champa. So he does get to rest our Vegeta. But he does not get the draw. And that's kind of what we were debating whether he was just looking for the draw or what this was. I'm not quite sure the point of the Beerus play or the Champa play. He does not present game anyway. I um, mean, you know, it's only just a 15k. Kind of felt like he was probably trying to tap a Vegeta so he could swing into it with a baby. And I had to check it to make sure. But yeah, he does not get the draw because the draw is only when he plays it on the opponent's turn. So now he's just a two drop 15k that taps something in rest mode or with a barrier. So again, my debate here was I don't really care if the Vegeta dies now because, um, the six drop energy explosion Goku has Invoker himself. I'm just kind of debating whether I need to even swing at the or negate this or what do I need to do. He goes ahead and swings with the Champa first. Where, you know, and my thinking process here is I'm trying to rationalize is there anything, if I were to Sleepy Boy and bounce this baby back to his hand, is there anything I need to worry about on the crackback? And he's only got two energy, so the baby can't come out. I pretty much, as long as I win, I'm good. That was my debate. Like, I'm re-going over my options to make sure I just win. But I wanted to get this draw, too. Which may be a little greedy. Because the Vegeta's largely irrelevant at this point. But I'm just, like, going over all my options. Yeah, now I now that the baby's at hand, I'm like debating was like was that the right call or not? Which ultimately I do think it was. So now we go ahead and draw into our rival seeker. So now we're definitely set up. Uh, just kind of looking, we getting to our energy. We go ahead and drop the topo. Now I'm looking again, like potentially what could be his outs here. I need to make sure I get two extra cards in the warp so I can get that value. So I go ahead and death beam. And uh, put that there. Now we get to look at the top card. If it's an extra card, we put it into our hands. That's just another rival seeker. So it just goes back to the top of the deck. We should go ahead and do it again. That way we can get the two. Which again, going over everything to make sure I'm correct here. With two catastrophic blows, we should have it. So we go ahead and we put that in the drop, or put that in the warp. Now, ultimately, the Rival Seeker ends up being the correct play, but the smarter play was possibly to just go straight into the six drop here. 
Um, someone in Discord brought up that uh, Beerus Ball could potentially be an out uh, because this guy. But um, so in hindsight, the bigger 35k is probably a better option. So we're kind of waiting to see if there's a response on this one. We hadn't seen anything like that. We'd had pretty good hand knowledge. So I wasn't super worried, but that is, you know, something you could get uh, punished for. So we're just checking, do you have any responses? He says no, so we can go ahead and use the Rival Seeker's ability. Uh, bring the two cards from our warp to our hand. And we get to play the six drop. Six drops comes into play. Uh, we blow up three of our energy and put three multicolor extra cards into our energy. Then we're back at six. I'm just reading it again just to make sure. And we just go one catastrophic blow because of Goku in play and everything, he takes two. Then we go one catastrophic blow for that final point of damage. Yeah, that is our game yesterday, guys. Um, so we ended up playing a couple more. Um, this was the last game of the day. This was once we got to that, into that final version. Um, I did think the deck ran relatively solidly. Um, I could be a little bit more comfortable with it, um, just knowing what my deck does a little bit better, so that's on me. But anyway, guys, that is it, and we will see you all next time.